Those assembled arise and stand to greet the arrival of the German Führer. A date which will live in infamy. The Japanese have just officially laid down their arms. They have signed terms of unconditional surrender. On August 14, 1945, one of the most famous photos in all American history was taken. It was taken by Life Magazine's Alfred Eisenstadt in Times Square in New York right after the news that Japan surrendered to the U.S., bringing the end of World War II. The picture depicts the reaction of the American people to the news that told them that no more of their soldiers were going to die. However, no one truly knows who these two people are. Life Magazine put out an article asking the two in the photo to come forward. Many men have come forward and claimed to be the kissing sailor. However, three stand above the rest. They are Glenn McDuffie, Carl Mascarello, and George Mendoza. However, there is only one true kissing sailor, and his name is George Mendoza. Uh, I actually met uh, George Mendoza quite by mistake. Uh, I was... Uh in 1995 or thereabouts, I was uh, actually walking through Newport and uh, came across a picture in front of a restaurant and uh, decided to go in on the lead of, from a student that I had, Anthony Restivo. And um, uh, Anthony told me that this, uh, the, the kissing sailor ate breakfast at this particular restaurant. Never believed him until I happened to walk by the very restaurant and then walked in and that led to my, um, uh, my first meeting with George Mendoza. And I got... 30 days leave plus 8 days travel time and I come back to Newport and after being here about a week on leave the new brother-in-law said to me that his mother and father were coming from Long Island to visit him. So anyway when his mother and father came from New York they brought their niece with them. So when I met the niece she was 21 and beautiful. So I kept in touch with the niece by phone and I cut off my leave by a few days and I went to New York and I met the niece. So the niece and I were nightclubbing around New York and stuff and finally we were in Radio City Music Hall that last afternoon of August the 14th. The first sign of anything was that there was pounding on the doors from out in the street in Radio City Music Hall. And the people inside, like myself, we were, what the hell's going on outside there? So finally they stopped the show and they said the Japs have surrendered, the war's over. Well, Radio City emptied out and we went down into Times Square. And like they claimed, there's well over a million people in Times Square. So we was headed down through Times Square and when I saw the nurse, approaching on my left and with the excitement of the drinking and the excitement of the war over so I grabbed the nurse and I grabbed her and kissed her thought nothing of it I didn't know there was a picture taken so I flew out of New York that night and I guess it was 20 years afterwards before I ever saw the picture so a lot of people today they say to me well how come you you're with a date and you grab a nurse. And the honest truth is that photo there when the aircraft carrier Bunker Hill, she got, she got hit with uh, two suicide dive bombers. So later in the day, when the Bunker Hill got the fires all out, there's a picture down there in the right hand corner that shows a hospital ship. See it? Yeah. And we're putting the wounds across, some of them guys are in tough shape. And as we're putting them over, the nurses on the hospital ship were going right to work on those guys. And they were doing everything. A lot of them guys were in tough shape. And I remember watching those nurses working on these guys. And it sunk in my head, and it's still there today, what those nurses did to save them guys. And I honestly believe that when I was in Times Square, when I saw the nurse, I think I had a soft spot for nurses, and I know damn well that if that girl did not have that nurse's uniform on, that I never would have grabbed her. And I, I say it was the uniform that made me grab her. 
Well, there are several things um, that speak, I think, in this picture that, it, that is in George Mendoza. One is rather obvious. When one looks at the hands, you can't help but notice that the, the size of the hands are, uh, seem almost uh, superhuman in, in, in terms of their, their width and their length. And when one looks at George Mendoza's hands, they can't help but be, t be taken by, the, by the, the, the sheer size of those hands. They, they come across almost like a, a catcher's mitt rather than actual hands. So that's one thing. But I'll, so here's the famous photo. This one, this is. Oh, you see that face there? Yep. That's the girl I was with. That was my date that day. That's Mrs. Mendoza. So anyway, there's my rate. I was a first-class petty officer. There's a three chevrons. It was a right arm rate. That rate should have been sewn on that sleeve up here. But I never sewed it on because my uniform had been in the locker for two years and it was nothing but a rag. Uh, what he, one of only two sailors to actually make reference to this is George Mendoza. Glenn McDuffie says that this was basically shaded away, uh, which you know is, is not true because in order for that to be the case, it would have had to have happened with all four of Eisenstadt's pictures. In addition to that, another picture that was taken from a different angle by Lieutenant Victor Jorgensen, it does not appear in that picture either. So unless the suggestion is going to be that all of these people conspired to, to get the markings off of the rates rather off of uh, the shoulder in all five of these pictures, which is, 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 is ludicrous. Now you uh, see this, see that white spot there on the inside of the left arm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See a lump? Well, there right it is. There. See what, what there it is. Also, I think this might be the most telling feature, and it's very difficult to tell in this picture. In fact, the, the best picture to see, this is the fourth picture of George Mendoza's pictures. But right here, there's actually the letters GM. Um, and this gets brought out very, very clearly in the fourth picture, this being the second of Eisenstadt's pictures of this event. But in that fourth picture, you can see a G and an M, where, which are still visible today if you look very, very carefully. They're very light. They've faded quite a bit over the years. But the, it is still nevertheless there. This is um, very distinct um, and very unique, I think, amongst all the claimants to be the kissing sailor. George Mendoza is the only one that has this exact mark. So my wife, when she saw that picture, right here, when she f first got a hold of this picture, she said, she said, I think that is me, she said. And I kept saying, geez, I can't think so, I don't know. But she kept insisting, she said, I think that is, you know, her. Well, anyway, I got this photo. Well, there's my date. That's my wife today. Now, there she is the same year that that picture there was taken. Is that the same girl or is it? I, uh, I interviewed George Mendoza and all of the other applicants uh, who were taken seriously for this and was able to determine um, uh, that indeed it is George Mendoza, that his case is by far the stronger case from all other um, uh, claimants. Well, sure, I'm the kiss and sale. I can prove it, and maybe someday we'll find out. The proof is there. The whole thing is Life magazine. About two years ago, I got a telephone call, and she says, are you George Mendoza? And I says, yes, I'm George Mendoza. And she says, I am Barbara Burroughs. And she's the top person at Life magazine in the ph photography end of it. Yep. And I said, I'm surprised that someone at Life is finally getting in touch with me. And she says, well, all these years, she says, I felt bad the way you was used. And she says, as a matter of fact, she says, my heart ached, was her exact words. And I want to meet you. Well, I sent her a folder with all my proof and evidence. Uh. And I, the mistake I made was sending her that folder with all my evidence, and I believe that she showed that to the big shots at Life magazine, and I believe that they told her to stay the hell away from me. Oh. And that's the end of my contacts at Life.